and marriage is mujahadatun nafs. It is, it, is, it is a jihad of the nafs. The reason why it's jihad of the nafs is because when you go home, and sisters, please don't, um, don't get angry with, with me. I'm just kind of lighten up everybody. These guys are falling asleep, okay? So it's a joke, joke at your expense. Um, but when you do go home and you have a wife who's nagging, and you have to endure her nagging, then boy, you know, you, you feel like, you know, it's better for me to stay at work. Or the same way if, if the woman, um, she's, she, she goes to bed and then her, you know, two minutes into the, into the sleeping, the husband starts snoring like a tractor and then he's letting out gas at night and, you know, he's got bad breath. This is all mujahada. You know, you have to, at the end of the day, it's two different people coming together and live, living together. Um, obviously, there are going to be differences, okay? And, and to live with those differences, uh, I think it's um, Al Asma'i. Asma'i, one grammarian, he, he mentions an incident where, where so, um, somebody came to the house of, of this other grammarian, and um, this grammarian was really, really dark and really not very appealing to look at the man. Um, it wasn't very appealing to look at, and his wife was really pretty and. and, and and really nice and and these buyuf, um these guests they came and they saw the woman and they said you know what's, what's wrong with you you know wh why are you married to this guy who's absolutely appalling to look at and she said she said don't say anything about my husband because maybe maybe i did something wrong and he is my jaza he's my punishment or maybe he did something good and i am his reward Okay, so um, again, what I'm trying to say is that it's marriage itself is it's an act of worship is because it's mujahada involved. You know, somebody can go to the jihad field and blow themselves up, that's fine. But come on, try to do jihad with your wife. That's a completely different kettle of fish, di completely different uh, picture. Um, in, in the hadith, it says, Man sabra ala su'i khalqi mra'atihi a'atallahu min al-ajri misla ma a'ata ayyub ala al-bala. Wa man sabra ala su'i khalqi zawz... ومن صبرت على سوء خلق زوجتها أعطاه الله من الأجل مثل ما أعطى آسيا إمرأة فرعون. But whoever the man who is patient and endures the bad manners and characteristics of his wife, then Allah Subhanahu wa Taala will give him the thawab that he gave to Ayub عليه السلام when he was in his when he was enduring all the pain. And and the woman who endures the bad akhlaq. And, and the bad character from her husband, if she can endure that, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give her the th thawab of what Asiya, the wife of Fir'aun, endured um, from Fir'aun. And, and um, then we have... Okay. Then we have um, love and pleasure. Now, one of the things that you have to understand is that when we get married, we're not only getting married for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we're not only getting married for an act of worship, we're not only getting married for procreation. There is a, there is a different element which is really, really necessary, and if that element is not there, then your marriage will not become a pleasure of Allah, or it will not become an act of worship. Because what's going to happen if you don't have the love and the compassion and the pleasure and, and the feeling for each other, then you're going to have a very hard life. And when you have a very hard life, half the time you're going to be depressed, you're going to be crying, and you're going to be in an argument, and you're going to be looking at other women. So all those other things, it doesn't really matter. Yet, well, there is a hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam where the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says Tunkahul Mar'atu li arba'a Women are married for four reasons Li husniha wa jamaliha wa diniha wa hasabiha That you know they're married for their beauty Li husniha wa hasabiha wa maliha They're married for their beauty, they're married for their status, they're married for their wealth You know, so, so and, and, and they're married for their deen And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said Fazfar bizat al-deen taribat yadak You know, you know Find a woman and, and and get married to the woman who has got the deen, okay? Because if you don't do that, you're going to be in trouble. I will I will explain what that hadith means. 
But remember, this is the pyramid. Okay, at the pyramid, we've got the pleasure of Allah. On each side of the pyramid, on each side of the pyramid, we've got love and pleasure of each other, and then we've got acts of worship. When all of these get together, then only then you can have a very happy family. You can procreate properly. But however, if you take that love and pleasure away from from the marriage, then that pyramid is going to stumble. It's going to stumble. Allah Subhanahu wa Taala says, "Liyasnu ilayha," that. You know, one of the reasons why you get married is so that you can have compassion and you can have love um, to, towards each other. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says that the best of you is the one who is best towards the and, and most loving towards their wife. And I am the best of you because I am the most loving towards my wife. Okay, so this, this element of love, I know that it's a taboo subject and we will, we will go through a lot of taboo subjects today. Um, this element of love, you have to understand that some of us, we sometimes get a Sufi attack. Okay, and, and we think that, okay, I, I am the hakim in the house, I'm the leader, and I'm the king, because this, this, this guy, he's, um, you know, ha have you heard of the hadith of Umm Zara? Hadith of Umm Zara is, a, a, I'll mention this some other time, it's a very, very long hadith, narrated in Sahih al-Bukhari, where tw 12 women from the tribes of Yemen, they get together and they start back chatting about their husbands. You know, they're, they're under fire. Uh, and this is Sayyidah Aisha narrated, this is a very famous hadith, and uh, this is called the hadith of Ibn Zara. And, and they start talking. Some of them, uh, you know, one says, Zawji lahmu jamalin ghathin. You know, my husband is like, the, is like the meat of a bad camel who, you know, who's, who's on the top of a mountain. Another one uh, says, the Zawji masuhu masnul arnab wa rihu rihu zarnab. I say that, you know, my husband, his, his touch is really delicate, like the, like, like the touch of a um, rabbit. And his smell is very fragrant, like that of musk. And, and then one uh, woman says, Zawji iza dakhala, Zawji iza dakhala asida, wa iza kharaja fahida, wa la yis'alu amma ahida. That my husband, when he comes home, he becomes a lion. Right? And when he goes outside, he becomes a jackass. Right? Meaning that, you know, outside, he doesn't have the audacity or he doesn't have the, uh, the, the um, confidence to talk to anybody. He doesn't have the confidence to um, protect himself or stand up to himself if somebody's taunting him. But when he comes in, subhanAllah, Zawji is dakhala asida, he becomes the sheer, he becomes the lion. So she says, why don't you go and take this attitude outside and deal with the people? Have you only found me to deal with, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm just a subservient one here, so you become a lion towards me. Okay, so, so, so we shouldn't have this attitude where when we come home, that we should become a lion and we think that okay this is my domain i am the king of the castle here and every you know the everything that i say that goes no it's supposed to be especially living in the west where our women that are a bit more liberal than back in bangladesh um and, and and they've had that training maybe we should be a bit more understanding towards their needs because um we're just going to look at some of the usul al and we'll mention the difference between qawaid and rawatib so you need that love and pleasure there we will talk a bit more about this later on. Let's go into uh, procreation. Okay. Procreation. Um, first of all, it's it's gaining the pleasure of Allah through preservation of the human. Can, can the sister see this? Yeah. Gaining the pleasure of Allah through the preservation of the human race that I, I mentioned that Imam Ghazali he gives that he gives that uh, metaphor. Also, love of the Prophet through making the Ummah big. The Prophet says, Tazawwajul wadudul walud fa inni mukafirun bikumul umam. The Prophet says um, that, you know, marry the woman who is, very, um, who, who, is, who is very soft and compassionate and also will give you a lot of, a lot of children. Fa inni mukafirun bikumul umam. Because on the Day of Judgment, I will pride in the, in the vastness and the greatness of my Ummah. Just a uh, hadith narrated by Imam Ahmad on the authority of Sayyidina Mu'adh ibn Jabal on the point that we were ma mentioning before about love and pleasure. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says Man nakaha lillahi that whoever whoever marries for the sake of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala wa ankaha lillahi and he also makes love to his wife for the sake of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala faqad istahaq al-wilaya then that person is a wali of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. Subhanallah. Is a friend of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. You know, I mean, you have to take this into context that he has to be with full sincerity. Just because you get 